Hello, and welcome to another video lecture for Mr. Moser's eighth grade U.S. history class. This is the first of several on the Great Depression uh, from boom to bust. The textbook readings for this particular lecture series comes from page 778 to 782, the section titled The End of Prosperity, and pages 790 to 795, Americans Face Hard Time. Guiding questions. What happened to the stock market on October 29th, 1929? What was the run on the banks? What is meant by the term business cycle? What is the difference between a recession and a depression? What is seen as the four causes of the Great Depression? How did this snowball out of control? On October 29, 1929, known as Black Tuesday, the stock market will crash. About $8 billion will be lost just in one single day of trading on Wall Street, and $30 billion will be lost over three weeks of time in that trading time period. During the 1920s, a lot of the stocks were being overpriced, overspeculated. So they really weren't really worth the value that they were being credited for. And so when people started to feel that maybe they should cash out before the stock begins to drop, uh, they start selling their stocks and selling them in large numbers and quantities, which cause a panic on Wall Street, which caused even more people to sell their stocks, which is what triggered the stock market to collapse in the first place. Now, after the next few weeks of the stock market crashing, American confidence in the economic system was very much rattled and shaken. Even though most people did not necessarily directly invest in the stock market, they did put money into banks, and those banks were putting money into the stock market. So there becomes a run on the banks that takes place also in the early 19. 30s in late 19, 1929 and 1930, where Americans kind of start panicking and thinking, oh my gosh, is my money still safe in the bank? And so they go to their banks who basically withdraw their funds, their, their money out of the bank. And pretty soon banks can't keep up on the demand of paying this cash. They didn't keep all this cash on hand. Uh, they may have had it on paper, but not necessarily in their actual vaults to pay all these people back. And so pretty soon banks started to go kind of belly up. They started to lose money and, and some of them even ended up crashing. And by the peak of the Depression, about 3,000 banks would basically close uh, during the Great Depression. Now, when we think about the Great Depression, um, this is kind of part of what we call a business cycle. And our economy tends to be a little bit like a roller coaster. There are peaks and valleys. There are some years the economy is doing very, very well. It's producing a lot. People have jobs. People are making money. And there are other times when the economy goes through a downward turn where there's less production, less demand for products. So there's less production, and people end up being unemployed. Uh, we call these downward cycles a recession, and usually recessions only last for a few months and are kind of localized in one country. And our country throughout its history has undergone many different kinds of recessions over different periods of time. Usually about every 15 to 20 years, there's some kind of downturn in the economy that tends to take place uh, during this recession period where the, the economy is shrinking. It's not growing. It's not expanding. Depressions are a little bit more of a severe problem. They last a lot longer. They are tend to be a lot deeper in terms of the economic impact, and they tend to impact other countries as well. So when we think about the Great Depression, it was not a recession as part of this business cycle. It was actually a long-lasting depression, which lasted for about 10 years. So what actually caused the Great Depression? Well, historians and economics professors don't always necessarily agree on the, on the main central causes. Some will emphasize other areas over some others. But uh, as a general consensus, it's usually four major things that we look at for the causes of the Great Depression. One of them is one we just discussed, the stock market crash. During the 1920s, the stocks were overvalued. People had put too much emphasis on them, thinking that they were really worth a lot. And in reality, they were really on shaky ground. They were over, overvalued. And so when the people started selling their stocks, this created a panic in the economic system in our country, which created kind of a rippling effect. Another reason why the Depression was such a bad thing was so much individual debt. Remember in the 1920s, a lot of stores were encouraging people to buy now but pay later through the practice of credit. And during the 1920s, a lot of Americans had accumulated a lot of debt. They had borrowed a lot of money from banks and other inst financial institutions, but they uh, were hoping that they could pay it back someday, but when the Depression hit, uh, they didn't have any money, any kind of safety net to land on, and they basically would lose everything, which created even a deeper and more harsher problem for them. 
Another problem was this unequal wealth distribution. Even though the 1920s was seen as the roaring 20s where a lot of people were improving their standard of living, people can afford more items like cars and consumer goods, um, that was not true for everybody. There were a lot of Americans living during the 20s that were living paycheck to paycheck and were just barely scraping by. And when the Depression hit, they were hit probably the hardest uh, because they just could not withstand this kind of financial calamity that happened in our nation's country. And then the fourth and final one was all the bank failures because so many people had saved their money in banks and as the banks began foreclosing and closing their shops and losing the money that people had invested, it just created a greater, greater problem. In a lot of ways, the Great Depression was kind of a sm snowball effect. What started out first was the stock market crash was the first signs and symptoms that the national economy was not really situated in a very strong position. As things began to pick up steam, banks and people lost confidence in their banks and we had the run on the banks and banks started closing. Uh, that created a greater panic. Now for a local person, if you had your money in a bank and you lost your life savings, that is a horrible thing. But if you are a factory or a business and your money was invested in a bank that went bankrupt, that means that your business lost out all that money as well. So pretty soon businesses start closing. They can't maintain productivity because they just lost all their money in this bank closures and all these stock market crashes. And so people lay off their workers. They fire their, their employers because they can't pay them anymore. They're not producing anymore anyway. Well, as people now aren't working, that means they can't buy any products anymore. And that means that more businesses basically go out of business. And as more businesses go out of business, they begin firing yet more people. So this really begins to snowball out of control. And by the time we get to the early 1930s, the national economy was really at the lowest possible point that it could possibly be. One out of four Americans were unemployed. Thousands and thousands of banks had closed. A lot of people had lost their money either in the stock market or in the bank failures that took place. Businesses were beginning to shut down. People were being laid off from being able to work. And you didn't have any kind of safety nets to help people transition from this time period. So as we think a little bit about the causes of the Great Depression with the stock market crash, a lot of individual debt that people owed to banks and other stores and credits uh, who could now not pay their money back because they don't have an income, because of unequal wealth distribution, because there are some people who were successful in the 20s, but still a lot of Americans who were living paycheck to paycheck just could not weather the economic storm that took place. And because of the closing of all the banks, will end up leading to be a very serious economic downturn. And again, a depression is a long lasting economic downturn. So this is going to end up lasting in American history for just about a decade, and it's going to be very difficult for America to dig its way out. So this has been our first lecture series on the uh, causes of the Great Depression and the beginnings of a little bit of the Great Depression. Thank you for listening. As always, if you have questions, please make sure you contact your teacher. Thank you.